my goodness. The long-anticipated public reveal of heat shield tiles and metal debris from Starship S-33 is finally here. SpaceX now faces a significant workload, including ongoing collaboration with the FAA and addressing concerns in affected regions. Next, we'll delve deeper into the issues leading up to the explosion, focusing on the engine failure. And finally, we'll touch on the intriguing debate surrounding the future of the Hubble Space Telescope. All this and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flight 7 began on a high note with B-14 performing flawlessly in its initial moments. However, the latter half of the flight turned into a dramatic and concerning spectacle. The explosion that occurred was both visually stunning, with debris streaking across the sky like blazing meteors and troubling due to its implications for the mission. The immediate question following the explosion was, where did the debris end up? Earlier reports suggested that some debris might have drifted toward the coasts of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. However, subsequent updates indicated that pieces had also appeared along the shores of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Initial images showed a single heat shield tile washed up on the beach, but the latest revelations, including photos shared on Reddit, suggest the presence of far more debris. In one striking image, debris is laid out on a long table, with what appears to be over 100 pieces of varying sizes and shapes. Among these are at least two intact tiles. Additionally, reports have emerged of metallic debris from Starship S-33 being discovered on the islands, with locals actively searching for fragments. The government of the Turks and Caicos Islands has since issued warnings, urging residents not to interact with these materials due to potential safety concerns. Given this information, it's likely that the visible debris represents only a portion of the total. These are merely the pieces that washed ashore, while numerous others likely remain floating in the ocean uncollected. Local authorities have already begun addressing the issue. In a public statement, Delini Daniel Selvaratnam, the governor of the Turks and Caicos Islands, expressed her concerns. Like many across the Turks and Caicos Islands, I share the concern caused by the outfall of debris and bright colors in the sky yesterday evening. This fallout was forewarned by the FAA, which had predicted that debris could travel beyond the designated hazard area, although SpaceX maintained that Starship remained on its planned trajectory, even though they expressed uncertainty in their updates. In response to these developments, the FAA has called for a formal mishap investigation. On January 16th, the agency announced via X that SpaceX is required to investigate the loss of Starship during Flight 7. Musk has set a tentative target of February for Flight 8, but this timeline remains uncertain given the ongoing investigation. Over the next several weeks, SpaceX will need to complete several critical steps, including confirming debris locations with affected regions, identifying the root cause of the mishap, and implementing corrective measures. Despite these challenges, there is good news. The incident caused no reported injuries. The FAA stated on its website, there are no reports of public injury and the FAA is working with SpaceX and appropriate authorities to confirm reports of public property damage on Turks and Caicos. Similarly, the National Security Secretariat of the Turks and Caicos government revealed there are no reported injuries and reports of only minimal damage to property at this time. These positive updates, combined with SpaceX's renowned efficiency and the FAA's improved pace under its new leadership, suggest that the issues could be resolved relatively quickly. Even former NASA Administrator Bill Nelson underscored the importance of testing in his congratulatory message to SpaceX following the flight. Flight 7 was a major milestone for SpaceX, introducing a host of new upgrades and testing objectives. This was the first mission to feature the V-2 Starship, or version 2, which included significant enhancements to the flaps, heat shield, and payload deployment systems. Of particular note were the modifications to the heat shield. SpaceX had removed tiles in certain areas and showcased upgrades to the metallic heat shield and active cooling systems during the pre-flight broadcast. Musk later confirmed that these systems performed well in terms of adherence during the flight. However, their true capabilities, especially during critical phases such as re-entry, remain untested. This underscores the urgency of moving forward with Flight 8 to validate these upgrades and ensure they meet SpaceX's ambitious goals. Looking ahead, the critical question remains, can SpaceX and the FAA resolve the current issues in time to proceed with Flight 8 next month? The answer depends on the speed and effectiveness of their efforts in addressing the fallout, identifying technical flaws, and implementing necessary improvements. How about you? What do you think? Will these challenges be overcome in time for Flight 8 to launch as planned? 
Share your thoughts by responding with yes or no in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's groundbreaking journey. In addition to investigating and resolving the heat shield issue, SpaceX must also address other underlying factors that contributed to the failure of Flight 7. One significant area of concern is the engines. During this mission, while the Super Heavy booster performed admirably, issues with the ship's engines became increasingly apparent. To gain deeper insights into these problems, notable analyses by the Space Engineer and VBS Space have proven invaluable. Their detailed visuals and breakdowns have shed light on the sequence of events leading to the mishap. A huge thanks goes out to these teams for their meticulous work. If you haven't already, consider following them for further intriguing updates and insights. The first signs of trouble emerged at T plus 7 minutes and 39 seconds when one of the ship's sea level engines failed. Musk had previously disclosed concerns about oxygen leaks, which likely contributed to the engine's malfunction. This issue resulted in inadequate fuel supply to the engine. Worse yet, the oxygen leak also increased pressure within the cavity above the ship engine firewall, potentially setting the stage for further complications. At T plus 7 minutes and 52 seconds, a fire was observed in the hinge of the starboard aft flap on the ship. This fire coupled with the oxygen leak, triggered a sharp drop in fuel levels. Soon after, at T plus 8 minutes and 2 seconds, another sea level engine on the same side failed. A second later, a vacuum engine located nearby also shut down. The sequence of failures continued with the second vacuum engine shutting down at T plus 8 minutes and 17 seconds, followed by the last sea level Raptor engine at T plus 8 minutes and 23 seconds. The cascading engine failures combined with the unusual sequence and locations of these shutdowns caused a significant imbalance in thrust. This imbalance forced the ship to deviate from its intended trajectory, leading to a rotation instead of staple flight. Faced with this situation, SpaceX activated the flight termination system, a decision confirmed by the abrupt halt in speed and altitude parameters. Many analysts speculate that the root cause of these failures may lie in a blockage within the liquid oxygen tank, possibly due to ice formation and accumulation. Such a blockage could have increased pressure, damaging pipes and causing the oxygen leak. While this theory remains unconfirmed, further updates from SpaceX are expected to clarify the situation. These findings will guide the necessary upgrades for Flight 8, which is already undergoing testing. Additional observations from the space engineer provided insights into the behavior of the Super Heavy during hot staging. During the flight, a part of the booster was jettisoned and based on its trajectory, it appears to have fallen farther from the shore compared to Booster 12's crown. This component will likely be recovered soon for analysis, for analysis at Starbase. In our last bit of news, the Hubble Space Telescope is facing significant challenges related to budget cuts. At the 245th meeting of the American Astronomical Society on January 14th, representatives from the Space Telescope Science Institute highlighted the potential impact of reduced funding on Hubble's operations. NASA has asked the Institute to plan for Hubble's operations from 2026 to 2029 under a reduced budget of 83 to 87.8 million dollars annually, which represents a 20% cut from its current operational budget. This request has been met with concern, as it could drastically affect Hubble's efficiency and jeopardize related scientific programs. Julia Roman Duval, the interim head of the Hubble Space Telescope Mission Office at the Institute, described the challenge as nearly impossible. She explained that reduced funding would limit the functionality of certain equipment modes, hinder research activities, and force a reduction in staff. These staff members are critical for addressing anomalies and unknown issues, meaning their absence would increase the overall risk to Hubble's mission. NASA's proposed budget for Hubble in 2025 is set at $89 million, prompting discussions about necessary adjustments. Julio Roman Duval emphasized that this approach aims to delay irreversible changes until more clarity is achieved regarding long-term budget scenarios. In the meantime, the Institute is expected to present its proposals to NASA in February, with the hope of securing additional funding to sustain Hubble's operations. Hubble's annual budget averaged $98.3 million over the last decade, recently dropping to $93.8 million. Inflation has strained NASA's overall budget, complicating funding for the telescope, which now operates in single gyro mode due to technical issues. While optimistic about Hubble's potential to function until 2030, its future remains uncertain. Jennifer Lotz, director of the Space Telescope Science Institute, expressed hope for additional funding, but NASA faces tough decisions as Hubble's budget impacts other projects. 
including the James Webb Space Telescope. Hubble's Legacy, Transformative Discoveries, and Iconic Images. Hubble's Legacy, a myriad of transformative discoveries and iconic images, underscores its importance as a bridge between past achievements and future advancements in astronomy. The debate over Hubble's fate raises critical questions. Should NASA maintain funding, reallocate resources, or prioritize transitioning to newer technologies? What do you think? Share your thoughts on Hubble's future in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay informed about the latest developments in space exploration. Together, we can continue to celebrate and support humanity's quest to explore the cosmos. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, keep looking up.